So I just got done looking at a single family house. It was a nice house, but it was in a community with no HOA. HOA stands for Homeowners Association. So a homeowners association is um, just an organization that basically sets rules and regulations for a community to keep a standard uh, cosmetic look and a standard structural look of the community to keep things like kind of organized, clean, and, and have standards. Now, when you have no, and you pay the HOA a fee every month or every quarter for not just organizing the community, but for any amenities they may provide, such as mowing the grass, such as a pool, such as a common uh, uh, property that may have uh, a gym, anything like that, right? But when you say to yourself, well, I really don't want an HOA because I don't want to be told what to do, which I can understand that. I don't want to pay a fee. Just remember, when you don't pay an HOA, you're the HOA. You have to budget for mowing your grass or paying someone to do it. You have to budget for replacing your roof or paying someone to do it. You know, you always have to remember, it's not like you're getting away from something. It's just that you're transferring responsibility and deciding what lifestyle you want to live. So when you have no HOA, you don't pay a fee to an organization. You pay the fee to yourself or you save yourself for whatever amenities you want or don't want. You have a little bit more control. But the thing is, you don't have rules. You don't have a level of regulations other than the county municipality rules. Because your neighbor, even within a community that has no HOA, your neighbor can call the county and say you're not complying with uh, the rules of the county, such as, uh, you know, you you have your dog and your dog is not on a leash, um, such as you're not mowing your grass and, you know, it's causing it to protrude on their property. So there's always a level of regulation you have to follow, even if you're not in the HOA. But the, the issue with it is, look, when you're not in the HOA, it's going to be a little bit more junky community. Because you don't have rules, but you have to remember your neighbor doesn't have rules. So you may say to yourself, well, I'm a self-starter. I'm a self-disciplinary. I'll keep a level of structure with my property. I'll keep my property up. I'll keep my house in somewhat good condition. But your neighbor may have mental problems. They may be a sloth. And they may barely comply with the county regulations. Their house may have five vehicles on the front lawn and they're all like decaying. And so what happens is in communities that don't have HOAs, you have more freedom, but you also have more chaos. Now it is true when you're part of an HOA, I was part of an HOA for 15 years. It's true that you, look, you got more regulation. Uh, you got more money that, you know, you know again, you're, you're not saving money if you don't have an HOA, but you know, look, if there's an assessment on something, if you're, if you're paying for a pool in a community, just because you like the community, but you don't really use the pool, you're kind of paying for something you don't use. But an HOA keeps things in order, keeps things neat. They keep a standard. You know, like I saw the other day, there was an HOA that sent out a, a, a reminder to everyone in the community that look, like, I think, there's a, a, a law that um, after like 30 days after an election, you can't have political signs up. And some people in the community still had political signs. And so the HOA is on top of it not to let the community become a cesspool of political, uh, you know, grandeur, political arguing or, or just contention because your neighbor may have a different political philosophy than you. So it's like, you know, when you're when you're in a community with no HOA, your neighbor's hanging like a Ronald Reagan flag or a Bill Clinton flag and you hate him or you hate her or whatever, you know, and it's like, you know, it becomes a whole vibe, a whole energy. When you don't have rules and regulations, it's great because you have more freedom. You can park your RV right in front of your car, right in front of your house. But the bad thing is your neighbor's got 20 RVs. None of them are taken care of and he don't got any rules either. And he wants to raise chickens. So now your neighbor's got chickens crowing. He's got five vehicles. His house siding is decaying. Okay. And he's smoking weed in the backyard. 
and you didn't want an HOA, so now you're an Armageddon. So look, now that's a little bit extreme, but that's the that's the bottom line. Okay. The bottom line is an HOA sucks because it has more rules and regulations and a monthly fee, but it keeps things in order. It keeps uh, a certain amount of money allocated towards certain improvements that it does periodically, and it provides a level of benefit to the community that most people wouldn't be able to afford on their own, and it just keeps a structure. No HOA means maximum freedom, but it also means maximum responsibility. You have to save for the capital improvements. You have to do them. And even if you do them, your neighbor may not. And so your neighbor may bring down your property value because he doesn't have the rules or the or the mindset of you. So, you know, that's, that's the give and the take. That's the pro and the con. Like everything in life, guys, there's a pro and there's a con. There's an HOA, and there's no HOA. Can't get away from uh, an imperfect world. So what do you do in life? How do you make a decision? Well, you have to evaluate your individual circumstance and the lifestyle you want to live. What's important to you? What are you willing to trade off? See, some people are willing to trade off the risk that the community doesn't have an HOA, but I I like my maximum freedom. I, I like to have an RV that's sitting in front of my house with no rules. And I'll take the chance how my neighbor handles it. Some people say, no, 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 I want order. I want amenities, uh, et cetera. You know, I, you know, I want a gym in my community. I want a pool in my community. I don't want my neighbor's house any which way. So like many things in life, right? There's not a right or wrong. There's an individual lifestyle that you decide you want. And like most people, they sell their house after 10, 12 years because they may decide they want a different lifestyle. So, you know, like, especially here in Florida, but even in New Jersey, it's like, that's, that's kind of the give and the take. Like, you know, that's, that, that's, that's what HOAs are and what they aren't. Uh, that's, and, and again, you can have an HOA if you're in a single family house, um, or if you're in a condo, I mean, it doesn't really matter. And it, it's just a, a decision you have to make if you're going to get into ownership. Ownership, guys, there's a lot to think of. And that's how people end up spending their weekend working on their house, not on themselves. That's how people start getting upset, not just with politicians, but the president of the HOA. It's a whole another government. And so it's like, guys, it's... It's not an easy decision, man. That's why I tell you, there's a lot to be setting for nomading and renting. Yes, you're not building up equity, but but yes, you're also not getting caught in that hornet, that hornet nest of HOA, no HOA. It's like it's it never ends, guys. There's always a, a something, you know. So what are you willing to deal with? I mean, part of the reason I stay a nomad is because for me, the freedom, the flexibility at my age, and for what I want to do in life, it still kind of outweighs anything. Even though I'm probably getting a little bit closer to buying a home base, possibly. Um. I'm really not, I'm really not looking forward to making that decision of, you know, HOA or no HOA, you know, but, you know, as I just looked at this house, I wanted to document my thoughts. If you're a YouTube creator, write down a thought when you get a wave of inspiration, because inspiration and creativity comes in waves. You got to document it. Either write it down or record the video immediately, save the video, upload the video on a structured schedule. You're the HOA of your YouTube channel. See, that's the problem. See, some people, they're, they're in a single family house with no HOA. That's their YouTube channel. That's, that, that's a parable. And their YouTube channel is destined to. It's, not, it's got like junky RVs in the, in, the, in the front yard. They haven't mowed their lawn because they got no structure. See, see, if you can't even run your YouTube channel, you ain't going to be able to take care of your house. Okay, so I don't know, guys. This is a whole nother level, man. But what I can tell you is hopefully these videos and me talking it out helps you. Uh, if it does, click the blue join button if you want to support the channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all my members. Uh, when in doubt, do something. Why? Because idle time is the devil's playground and faith without works is dead. And I'm not saying... When in doubt, don't buy. When in doubt, keep it simple. But when in doubt, stay productive. When in doubt, self-care. When in doubt, go to the gym. When in doubt, do laundry. Uh, when in doubt, keep it moving. Okay. Uh, so peace. Keep pushing forward. Thank you again for watching. I will see you guys, girls, and robots Okay, in the next video.
Peace.